The following podcast is a Sempronto Media production. Welcome to the Waste Away Podcast. Hey guys, I'm so excited to introduce to you Jocelyn Sidwell Holman. And we are talking, our title today is called The Top 12 Reasons Why I Keep This Amazing Beach Body After 40 Sexy, Lean, and a Size 2. So this is all about Jocelyn. This is how why she is able to have this amazing beach body after 40. She looks amazing. I will post up there. Hopefully she'll give me a couple of really great bikini pictures for me to post. <laughs> Most, I'm sorry. Um, because you are just an inspiration. Like you really look amazing. And so we're going to jump right into it. So the first, we were talking before we started and she gave me some of the 12. So I'm going to have you kind of expand on them. So first one is portion control. So yeah. what, what do you do to help yourself really get those portions down? I follow the old rule that, um, and if you ever heard everybody talk about portions, as far as if something can fit into your fist or something is your thumb and following the rule of eating till you're about 80% full, because we all tend to overeat. We're in this society where everything goes so fast. You feel like you just have to rush, 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 hurry, 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 and eat. And then you're on the go. And then you're tired because you overate. So just finding the balance of actually listening to your body and taking the time to actually mindfully eat and take time for your body to assimilate it properly too. I don't know if you've ever heard, but there's in Okinawa, Japan, there is a place, have you heard of it? It's called Harahachibu. That's the name of it. Mm-hmm. Harahachibu. And what that means is, is literally to eat at 80%. Yeah. So Exactly. That, that's they, their phrase. <laughs> They're living for a long time for a reason. They know that, again, it's the blue zone. It's one of those, it's a de-stress zone. So they eat very back to basic, back to nature and quality foods every single day that really, really just create this great synergy with their health and the environment. Yeah. And they say that the Okinawans over the age of 65, they're enjoying the highest life expectancy. And so men are expected to live to like 84 um, and women are expected to live to 90. And, you know, as Americans, we are just kind of bringing that number down and down uh, with prostate cancer, breast cancer, you know, just dementia, you know, all kinds of things. Yes, absolutely. So what are some kind of tips that allow you to help yourself to only eat at 80%? Look, I'm even doing like a (laughs) Japanese, I'm like getting in my Japanese mode. I love it. (laughs) Um, Meal prep. I make sure that I have certain things sectioned off for exactly how much and when. Um, Like my smoothies, for example, I pre-make them like three or four days in advance. Now, granted, that's only roughly, you know, four to five, depending for my husband and I. But that way, I know that's ready. I know that's done. I don't have to overthink about what breakfast is going to be or rush to appointments and have to skip breakfast or just grab an apple and then not have something that's sustainable. Hey guys, Chantal Ray here, and I'm here with Jocelyn Sidwell, and she is going to be making for us an amazing smoothie, so take it away. All right, guys, we're going to blow right through this. It's really quick, but this is my go-to favorite. So we're going to start with spinach, lots of spinach. Now, I don't measure spinach. I just um, put two large handfuls of spinach in there. Really smush it in there because it's all going to be blended together. Start adding in your zucchini. I'm using uh, half a chopped zucchini. Um, I'm going to put frozen banana in there as well. Keeps it nice and cool and refreshing. Um, There's going to be about, let's see here, about half a tablespoon of avocado as well. And I'm going to fill that up with a little bit of almond milk. Almond milk, you always wanna make sure that you find an almond milk that has the least amount of processed ingredients possible. Now, the reason why I went ahead and put the almond milk in there first before I add in some of the other supplements because it gets really sticky in the blender itself. So I'm gonna put it in, this is probably about a tablespoon of flax. Make sure and pay attention to that podcast we just talked about. It's got a lot of information about flax meal. And funny thing is, I'm actually gonna top it with a little bit of water. And I fill that thing to the max. (laughs) So while I'm doing that too, 
is because I'm going to make enough for Chantel and I both, and I'm gonna create a smoothie bowl for us as well. So I'm gonna blend this up really quick and make a little extra room, then I'm gonna add protein powder so we can make this into a meal. So it's gonna be a little loud. Quick little blend, like I said, so I can make sure and make enough room for that protein powder. That protein powder is also gonna make it thicker. So this smoothie itself, let me move this out of the way, is going to make roughly two smoothies. That's actually about 16 ounces. Pardon me, that's actually about 24 ounces. So I'm gonna fill it all the way up. Because if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna maximize my time and make as much as I can. So I'm gonna blend it all together one more time. And then like I said, we're gonna make it into a smoothie bowl. So you can drink this as is, which is more than fine. And look, look at that texture. I love a good quality green smoothie. So I've got a couple different varieties of toppings we can use here. And I'm gonna use the coconut bowls. I gently pour it in. Now you can make this thicker and you can add a tiny bit more protein powder you can also add a little bit of additional um, flax meal or banana as well. That'll make it a little bit thicker. Chantal, what would you like on your smoothie bowl? Blueberries. Blueberries. Would you like any flax or coconut? Yes, both. Do you mind my hands? Sure, go ahead. Awesome. And you just gently place them in. Top with a little bit of coconut right in the middle. And I love pumpkin seeds and I love hemp seeds. They are fantastic um, ingredients for not only omegas, but for plant-based protein as well. So there we go. So you went from not only having a green smoothie, but now you have a smoothie bowl. There we go. Love it. Cheers, you guys. Cheers. There you go. Um, but meal prep really helps to set me up for success on keeping those portion controls actually in control. Mm. Yeah, and it's funny because the Okinawan people, they are saying, I'm no longer hungry, while an American is saying, I'm full. And so I talk about that in my book is in our the hunger scale. And I say, okay, if four is completely full then you would stop eating at maybe a 3.7 or a 3.8. You know, you're, you don't have to get all the way to four to be full in order to, you know, just getting yourself in that habit. Right. I mean, if you look at anywhere you go to eat pretty much, they always want to give you, and I'm not trying to pick on any certain companies, so I won't say any names, but I'm not saying you shouldn't treat yourself, but almost everywhere you go, they're like, would you like bread on the side? Would you like a cookie with that? Do you want an extra large? It doesn't need to be extra large, but that's, that's sadly, that's going to have to come down to the individual. Um, and that's, you know, luckily what I'm able to help people with and, and what I do with coaching is to find how that portion control fits into their lifestyle and create those long-term healthy habits. So they don't feel like they either are not set up for success or they have, or they don't know how to make quality choices at a restaurant or a cafe. Now, is there anything that you can think of that, you know, maybe eating more slowly or using smaller plates that also help you with getting down to only eating to 80% full? Um, small plates actually do work. <laughs> I, I, it's a visual thing. If you have a gigantic plate, you automatically think, oh, I have to fill the plate up. We're just wired that way, unfortunately. So small plates actually do make a big difference. Um, 
smaller bowls, smaller plates, just take the appetizer plate, right? And I'm the big, you know, anybody that knows me knows that I definitely promote eating more plant food. Um, I'm not a full-blown vegan or I don't actually like to follow anything but a really clean, healthy lifestyle. But I always make sure that my plate, no matter what, is 60%, no matter what, is some sort of plant food. So that really makes a big difference in how I am able to keep myself lean and sexy and in bikini shape year round. Eating more plants really does make a big difference. Awesome. Well, number two, you said is limiting your sugar. So talk specifically of what, how much sugar are you eating in a day? And how do you kind of fight those cravings for like, for me personally, one of the things that is a big deal is after I finish eating, I always feel like I want something, a little something sweet. So do you give yourself uh, something sweet after you finish eating or what do you do? Um, Dark chocolate is definitely a go-to, but I also look at a really good quality dark chocolate as a vitamin. Um, And sometimes, you know, especially in our society, but sometimes that does create that feeling of of that term satiety. So it kind of gets, lets you go, oh, the meal is completely over. I've had something sweet after dinner. Now I'm good. Um, One way, especially at night that if I'm starting to crave something sweet and I really feel like maybe during that day that I had overdone my sugars, I will shoot for just tea. So I'll find some sort of tea of any kind. So that way I'm sitting there kind of savoring something really warm and comforting instead of feeling like I need to, you know, have more chocolate or some sort of dessert cookie, anything like that. Um, One of my rules that I really try to follow when it comes to sugars is a lot of times I try not to have any sugar at all after 2 p.m. Mm. That makes a big difference, I feel like, in cravings. And also, too, it's you got to remember, sugar creates this little, almost like you could say neurotransmitter issue in the body. As soon as you start giving it, now I'm talking about apples or blueberries or things like that. I'm talking about overeating on sugar in general, especially processed sugar. But let's be real, too much maple syrup can also be a problem. Too many, you know, beautiful dates, (laughs) you know, they're juicy and they've got great um, potassium, but they can still be too much sugar. So really focusing on keeping a golden rule of that sugar, having a break after 2 p.m. So talk to us about what kind of fruit you know, do you eat? So like, and how much per day? So like, what would a typical day look like for you of how much you're eating? Fruit is, and here's the thing, I think fruit, um, and not to pick on any diets, um, of course I never will, but fruit is getting a bad rap. Fruit has antioxidants. Fruit has fiber. It hydrates the body. But again, too much sugar can be a bad thing. But again, that goes back to if you're having nothing but fruit in the morning, like say, for example, in your smoothie, and then you're having cookies in the afternoon, and then you have some sort of dessert in the evening as well, too. Well, that's going to create an imbalance in the body with too much sugar. Not to mention, don't forget the types of breads or anything else that you're consuming, because that being a carbohydrate basically turns practically, you know, sugar can, you know, it turns into a carbohydrate. So my favorite fruits, um, banana in my smoothie is always a must. It just has that flavor that I love. So that just gives me that feeling of- Would you say you're having one one banana a day probably in your smoothies? Breaks down to probably only a quarter of a banana. It really does. Breaks down to about a quarter of a banana. Um, I will munch on some sort of fruit, whether it be mango, um, which has great vitamin C levels um, and is great for promoting immunity health too, which is nice, or apples. But to be my favorite fruit by far is berries, any kind of berries. They have the highest levels of fiber. Their antioxidants are through the roof and they're also hydrating and they have the lowest sugar. So you, I don't want to say indulge, but yeah, indulge on the blueberries and the blackberries and the strawberries. You know, Valentine's Day is kids right around the corner. Go get the, get some chocolate covered strawberries. <laughs> so how, so I think that's good. Cause you know, when I asked you that about this, the banana, you're like, yeah, I'm probably, I am having a banana every day, but I'm only having a quarter of a banana. If you had to estimate total amount of fruit that you are eating throughout the day, um, are you stopping eating the fruit at like two o'clock or how much total fruit would you say you're having? Like a cup of berries, two cups of berries? 
I would say five servings um, because let's let's go ahead and say I have a you know the perfect example. Let's say I have a quarter to let's say you know a quarter to a half a banana in my smoothie, and then I might have um, a quarter cup of say berries mixed in with something for a snack, and then right around that lunchtime or that if I'm starting to kind of <laughs> feel like I need that extra push, I'll have an apple with a little bit of almond butter, and then it's usually right around that you know one o'clock having lunch. And then I make sure that I really try not to have much more fruit after that. So it could be anywhere from three to five servings a day. So when you're saying a serving, are you saying like a serving is roughly one cup? Roughly for me personally, I would say about a quarter cup. I like a lot of variety. So if I'm a cup of berries is, I mean, that's eight ounces of berries. If you really think about it, that's a lot. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I kind of like texture. So (laughs) I want the crunch of an apple, but I like the squish of the blueberry. And again, I like that variety because you get different levels of antioxidants from everything. Okay. So you're saying I'm going to have like four or five different fruits in the day, but when I'm having it, I'm only having like a quarter cup of each. Exactly. And exactly. then when you're filling your body with that kind of sugar, you are feeling satisfied, like you're getting exactly. that sugar. So then exactly. you're wanting yeah. as other kind of sugar. I don't want the donut. I don't want the granola. I don't want the protein bar. I don't, I te- you know, I don't even want the chocolate sometimes because I've had enough of that quality sugar in that fruit already that is, yeah, that has created the satiety. Now, is there any kind of dark chocolate that you recommend? Like, are you, like when you have dark chocolate, you know how they have like that Lily's dark chocolate? That's yeah, made, that's a good one. That's made with like monk fruit or that that's Stephen, that's made with stevia. Are you going to say, look, I'd rather have like with sugar or would you say, no, I'd rather, I'm okay with stevia. I'm okay with stevia. Um, real dark chocolate by itself is going to be harsh for anybody. <laughs> it's a really, it's got a bitter flavor if it's a really high antioxidant level. Um, if it's a, excuse me, if it's a high percentage, some of my favorites, um, I love a company. Well, a lot of people have heard of endangered species. They do a good job and alter, I think it's called alter ego chocolate. I'd have to look that up. Don't quote me. Um, yeah. but if you've got the time, it literally takes two seconds. You know, I post a lot about making chocolate bark. I remember you said something about the recipe. And if you re, if you just put the cacao powder in with a little bit of coconut oil and you can pop it in the freezer with a little bit of your own stevia or whatever type of sweetener, that eliminates the processed food right there. You just made your own. And it literally takes three to five minutes, 30 minutes in the freezer, and you've got chocolate bark for days. So not only are you putting quality nutrients in your body, but now you're not having to worry about buying something in a package. Yeah. And it's actually the dark chocolate you're talking about. I think it's called Alter Echo, the East. Is it Echo? Yeah, yeah. I can't remember what it's yeah. called. Alter Echo. <laughs> and they have different ones. They have like, they even have like quinoa dark chocolate. Yeah. And, I, and, I like their, and I like their mission too. That's when, it, you know, I'm a big, when it comes to certain types of companies, I really enjoy their mission on what I want to support, right? Yeah, absolutely. And th- it is non-GMO and gluten-free and organic. So exactly. that's definitely a good one. That's okay. Good. Number three is flexible intermittent fasting. So tell I people about it. what you mean by that and when do you start eating and when do you stop eating? So I usually work out in the mornings. Now, what works for me is that I um, I do actually work out on an empty stomach. Um, I tend to have a little bit more energy that way, I feel. Um, now I can definitely, you know, by the time 11 o'clock rolls around, which is usually when I start eating. So 11 o'clock to say six or seven o'clock in the evening is usually my window. I'm done. Um, now again, flexible, let's let's be real. If I had an extremely hard workout the day before and I wake up and I am absolutely starving and I'm drinking enough water and it's not making a difference and I feel like I'm for you know lightheaded or blood sugar's dropping, please have something to eat. That yeah, it's then maybe you're eating at 10 a.m. instead yeah, of Yeah, exactly. And it's okay because remember our bodies can change and shift, you know, especially Really, it's men and women, but especially women, once we hit 35, I mean, honestly, it starts happening at 30, but once we hit 35, our bodies can shift. And now it changes for everybody, especially now that I'm 40, I listen even more. I'm not saying that 40 is that cusp, but I'm noticing that I'm that much more aware of if I need breakfast at a certain time. Now, I'm not going to overeat, but I'm going to have, it's a perfect example, I'm going to have a 
an eighth to a quarter of my smoothie, which is usually 12 ounces. So enough to get me to that I have enough energy to get through a gym class if it's a tough one. And then that way I don't feel absolutely exhausted afterwards. Because that's not going to do anything for your energy and for your adrenal glands. If you're literally working out to the point that you're exhausting yourself so much that your body has to recover that much harder. You're just creating more stress in your body. Are you enjoying the summit and hearing all the great advice that you don't want to forget? Get the all access pass and get all the video presentations and the audio downloads of every single session. You can get the all access pass and listen to the summit all year long if you want. The best part is you get all of the transcripts so you can go back and read and see every little note that they talked about. Go to fastingresetsummit.com to get your all access pass today. Hey guys, Lauren here. Did you know Chantel just released her new book, Fasting of Freedom? The book is all about the benefits of fasting from a biblical perspective. You'll discover how you can see supernatural healing in your body. You will learn how to discern God's still small whisper to guide you and help you make decisions. You will also master utilizing God's power to overcome difficult times and receive a breakthrough when you are stuck. And you will see how fasting can help you gain victory over a nagging area of sin in your life. You can order your copy right now on Amazon or go to fastingoffreedom.com. Link is in the show notes. Hey guys, I just finished writing a quick little 20 page recipe book that has some of my most amazing smoothie recipes. Everyone that comes over is like, Chantel, you can turn a smoothie into gold. And so I'm sharing that with you free. It's got my tropical colada smoothie recipe, my extra super green smoothie that tastes delicious, and it's all for free. Go to ChantelRayWay.com slash smoothie for your free book. I've also developed my own product line. You'll be able to get all these multivitamins that I'm doing in one pill. Each nutrient is totally legit. All the formulas are tested and science-backed without any mystery additives. Personally, my thyroid is better. My skin is glowier. I have more energy. This supplement is vegan, non-GMO, gluten, and allergy-free. Go to ChantelRayWay.com slash supplements and check them out. Now back to the show. Awesome. Number four is eliminating stress. So what are some specific yes. examples that you do that kind of get you into that Zen spirit? Um, I love yoga. I'm not practicing as much as I used to, you know, as I used to, but it's one of my favorite things because it's very grounding because honestly, people think that it needs to be something so you know, different poses and different things, but sometimes it's just standing or sitting in one position and just focusing and concentrating and focusing on your breath. Um, Something that's really huge that I tell a lot of my clients that one of the most important things that you can do with your breathing is making sure that you're allowing your belly button to come to your spine when you're taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out. So you're connecting your breath with your entire body, but you're also, right? You start doing it. (laughs) And you're actually working your interior core muscles at the same time. So you're actually allowing, you're working on your posture, which is really good for stress also too, because if you think if we're stressed, we hold our shoulders up really high and we scrint our neck in, or we're slumped over a computer all day long, right? So being able to just relax and sit gently, basically meditating. If you really want to talk about that, it makes a big difference on taking even five minutes. And it doesn't mean that you need to go and read what, you know, a perfect um, podcast about it or a book or anything. Find the time that works for you. If you've got five minutes, take it. If you've got an hour, take it. But one of my favorite things to do in the summer is paddleboarding. It's my Zen. (laughs) I love it. It's my Zen. It's my way that I de-stress. And I I really try to find some sort of de-stressor for every client and every person that asks me questions like that, because it really is a important way to get back to really what allows you to focus on not worrying about stuff. Everybody's got stuff. We've all got stuff. There's always dishes. There's always laundry. There's always clients. There's always work. (laughs) You need to take that time to reconnect with your personal self and focus on your own self-care. Well, and the other thing is what is eliminating stress for you may not be eliminating stress for someone else. Like for me, my husband got me a, you know, we live on the water and my husband bought me the paddleboard for Outback and I could literally paddleboard 
like just walk out my door and go paddle boarding. And I've only done it once because it stressed me out because, you know, I don't like, oh, to, yeah. I don't like to wash my hair. By the way, I did go blonde. My I husband, love the blonde, by the way. My husband hates it. So it probably won't last very long. He's like, no, babe, I married you as a brunette. Go right back to being a brunette. You can do um, brunette and um, go back to brunette. And then in the summer, just get a couple more highlights in. Yeah. And, well, it's a natural sun. Yes. So yeah. he basically, but but anyway, what I'm saying is like, for me, that was stressful. Like going paddleboarding because right. I was so yeah. afraid I was going to fall in the water, which is like no big deal if I fall in. But I was like, then I have to blow dry my hair. And it, just, well, it was no. and that, it, Absolutely. That makes total sense. That absolutely makes total sense. Because if that's going to, and that's a perfect example, because just because I say, oh, this works for me, doesn't mean it works for everybody. Because if that's going to create more stress in your life based on, because we have schedules and you have to stop because trust me, I have naturally curly hair. I love my curls, but they're unmanageable. So when I know that I have to blow dry my hair, it's like, you better clear an hour on the calendar. It takes a while. So I totally get it. And it's finding what works to de-stress yourself in your time frame, because if you're adding things on to de-stress, but you're causing more stress, you're not doing yourself any good either. Yeah. So allow yourself to eat what you want in moderation, number yes. five, in the 80-20 rule. So talk about that and give some real examples of times where you're like, I'm eating, if I want this, I have it. Yeah, exactly. So um, one of our friends has... Um, some friends that come in from Italy and they make real, real deal pizza. They have the cheese flown in, they make their own dough and, you know, pizza, there's not many people that don't like pizza. I love pizza. Let's be honest. But at the same time too, um, I'm not saying that I'm not going to go somewhere else and have pizza. Like for, you know, Belmonte has fantastic pizzas. There's all sorts of places that have great pizza, but those are things that actually, but that makes me excited about not having to worry about, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to, you know, worry about what I'm going to eat the next day. It's like, no, I'm excited to eat this. This is real. This is fantastic. And I'm going to enjoy every single bite of this. And, you know, honestly too, there's a lot of times, um, we were visiting um, my husband's family in Germany <laughs> and his aunt, poor thing, got so nervous because she was like, I, I don't know what to make you. I, I don't know how to cook for you. <laughs> and I said, I don't want you to don't don't change anything. I want to eat whatever you make. It's an experience. So I think that's a big part of the 80 20 rule is not being too concerned because when you're going out to dinner, yes, we want to make smart choices, especially certain goals that we have in our dietary needs, but let's be real. If you're creating too much of a restriction on yourself, you're basically living in a state of deprivation. All you're doing is telling yourself no all the time. No, you can't have that. No, you can't have that. No, I can't have that. Calm down. Everything's fine. <laughs> Live a little. We're all human. And you can clean it up the next day. If you're following an equality lifestyle, you're drinking enough water, you're eating clean foods enough, you're fueling yourself properly, having pizza or having that sandwich you probably shouldn't have had from taste or, you know, different things like that, that don't worry about it. There's always ways to clean it up the next day. Awesome. All right. Number six is cleansing and elimination. So. Yeah. What do you do to kind of really cleanse your body and feel like you're eliminating some of the toxins out of you? Water. Um, lots and lots and lots and lots of water. Um, I definitely focus on um, lemon in my water. The one thing that I try to do is tell people also that, remember, vitamin C is um, it's heat sensitive, so it'll break down. So you never want to have hot lemon water. You want to have warm lemon water. Now, I believe that you should have that on an empty stomach that helps um, with the stomach acid and aids in digestion and elimination. But if that doesn't fit into your daily life, don't overthink it. Just have lemon water. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I love dandelion. Dandelion is huge, I think, to help with not only um, elimination, but helping with the organs as well, too, especially the pancreas and the liver and the kidneys, which, of course, help with detoxing the body. So is that a dandelion tea that you're drinking? Mm -hmm. Dandelion tea and my go-to um, is flax. Flax seed, flax meal, 
goes in just about everything. And if I can get a little too TMI when it gets to that certain time of the month, it happens for women. And I always up my flax meal. So that way I know that I'm actually still able to eliminate properly (laughs) when, you know, when certain things happen with our hormones. Awesome. Number seven, love your body, even when it's not perfect. What do you mean by that? Well, we all have, um, we all are going to pick on ourselves. Unfortunately, there's always things that we think we need to work on fix or this, that, and the other. But if you're focusing on the negative parts of your body, you're not focusing on the other things that are positive. Focus on more of the positive things. What do you love about yourself? Don't worry about this stuff. You're working on that by eating quality foods, going to the gym, talking about what we're, you know, what we're talking about today, all these tips. You're working on those things. Focus on the things that you love. Don't focus on the things that aren't, that aren't bringing positivity and light into your life because that's also creating a negative mindset as well. Awesome. Uh, number eight is moving your body six times a week. So what are some of the workouts that you're doing and what do you recommend that really kind of, if you really go, I need to dial it in, yeah. what do you see that really kind of shapes your body even more? Um, maybe it's from my years of being a personal trainer, but I'm obsessed with high intensity interval training. Um, I think that it's one of the best things you can do for your body. Um, and I think that three times to four times a week, depending is the best time to do that. And then the other two should be somewhat of that, um, either stability, meaning yoga or something like that, um, or just quality movement, whether it be walking in a park, (laughs) um, just getting outside, getting back to nature and also to, you know, doing things like massage if needed and things like that also. Um, but the interval training really does make a big difference in my body because it incorporates everything that you could need in a workout without having to worry about, I'm going to do, you know, upper body this day. I'm going to do lower body this day. So working, what works for me is doing total body workouts three to four times a week. And what I'll normally do is something that's mixed with something cardiovascular, something heavy on the arms, something lighter on the arms, something core, and then I'll switch and do cardiovascular, core, light on the legs, and then heavy on the legs. So I'll always get a total body workout if I'm not taking a class somewhere. All right. Number nine, quality versus quantity and reducing the chemicals in your food. Is there anything um, that you say, like, here's some of the switches I've made. Like I used to use this. I now do this. And some of the, your favorite products that you love and you use on a regular basis. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm awful at remembering names. So I'm going to apologize in advance for that. And I will plug, but it's because I've discovered some of the products so much from, um, my friend that opened up her store, down at the beach called Glow Apothecary. So many of her products, because they're so versatile. And I think that's what I love too, because, you know, I don't want to just be, and I am a product junkie. (laughs) Most women are, but I'm trying to eliminate how many products I'm using all the time because it's just going to go in the trash. It's going to go in a landfill. And so many of her products you can use on your face, on your hair, and you can pronounce. I think that's the biggest thing that is really important. Can you pronounce what is in that product? Whether it be your food, your skincare, your hair care, um, even the things we're cleaning our house with. Um, All of that is a really big synergy if you think about that overall well-being. Um, But also to focusing on, you know, going back to even just eating as local as possible or as organic as possible too. Awesome. Number 10 is detox teas. I know that one of the things that, you know, Jen Van Horn always says is she says, if I don't have at least four or five cups of tea every day, she's like, I would be 10 pounds heavier. So that's kind of go to. So instead of being like, oh, I want to get a snack, she'll go have a, a cup of tea. And that really helps her keep the weight off. Is that, do you do the same? Absolutely. And that's what I was saying earlier that it's, there's something about, there's something comforting about that, 
But again, don't forget that teas are made from herbs and spices and antioxidants that our body is craving. You know, people forget when it comes, I always say, eat more plant food. But people get intimidated by that. They're like, oh God, I have to eat so much broccoli. I have to eat bananas. I have to eat this and that. You're going to make me eat kale and spinach and all this. Don't forget, (laughs) plant food is herbs and spices as well too. So, you know, and I love Jen, I love her philosophy, I'm obsessed with it. It makes, it's, it's so in alignment. Um, I love her mindset. Focusing on like the matcha tea, the green tea, I know she's big into that. So I definitely agree with that. But also to focusing on, you know, even going back to what we were saying about certain brands of things, um, yogi teas, because you can find them just about anywhere. They're a great one. And they have really great um, blends of their teas for immune system. But especially the ones that I love is the detox teas, because it has everything you can imagine. Dandelion, milk thistle, um, licorice root. It's got everything mixed in there. Mm. Number 11, stop making food your hobby and focus on another hobby than eating. Yeah, that's always a touchy subject um, because a lot of people look at that like, I don't want people to get offended by that topic because it makes total sense. We're in a society that is, that makes us feel like food is on every, I mean, if you think about it, it is in every corner, (laughs) everywhere you look, it's right there in front of you, but there's always other things you can do instead of being, you know, I always tell people, go get a glass of water. If you're hungry, drink 16 ounces of water. If you're still hungry or go walk outside for five minutes and see if that makes a big difference. Um, Certain things at night, like after work. I mean, look at all the different things that are going on. Look at the plant bar. Look at all these paint, um, the paint, you know, the paint bars everybody's going to, book clubs, things like that. Doesn't have to be everything revolved around food all the time. You can take your family and your friends and go do other things. You can volunteer, go do a beach sweep. You know, go to a soup kitchen and do something like that and give back, you know, or, you know, maybe learn to love paddleboarding. (laughs) Yeah. Awesome. And number 12 is water. We've kind of already touched on that of just reminding yourself how important it is. And sometimes we just get so busy, but a lot of times we are thirsty instead of hungry. Exactly. So we kind of confuse the two. Right. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Um, my website is levellifestyle.com. And I'm also on Facebook and Instagram, either Jocelyn Level Lifestyle or Level.Lifestyle. And I post great recipes and lots of great insight. Awesome. Well, if you have a question that you want answered, go to questions at ChantelRayway.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.